Hi, my name is Phil, a games artist and tutor at Escape Studios, and in this tutorial I'm going to be making a door. Well, not just making a door, but going over some useful hard surface modeling techniques inside of ZBrush. So to start with, we're probably going to Photoshop and uh, start to draw out these shapes. We're then going to go into ZBrush and go over how to use live booleans to cut shapes from other shapes to create this screw head and also retopologize it so we can have nice edges to our uh, models. We're then going to generate a mesh based on that image we drew in Photoshop, which will make up a lot of the parts of the door itself. Uh, this part being kind of a trim that we can convert into a different shape and cut from a box to make our door. And we're gonna obviously put our screw heads together, add some of the other elements like the hinges and screws, make the door handle. Uh, and this is where I mirror that piece to make a panel that I can then cut from a cube to make the final door. And then we can start to assemble it, add some surface detail, and start to look to retopologize it for a game, which we'll probably do in the next tutorial. So let's get started inside of ZBrush. As the first thing I want to do is inside the light box, which opens usually by default, go to where you find the tool tab. And in here, you can find shadow box. And in here, you have this sbref.psd. And this is where it lives at this location. So in program files, Pixlogic ZBrush. We can also double click on this. And it will load up into the texture menu. Then click on the texture menu and just go export. And then you can save this uh, somewhere you can find it. So for me, let's create a new file structure, call it door, and I'll save it just as sb underscore ref because it's kind of a template image and I'll show you what it does inside of Photoshop. So if you just jump into Photoshop next and open that image, which I have here, You'll see it just says back, right, and bottom down here. And these are what these represent is me being able to draw a black image in here and it generate a mesh from it. So it will generate the back profile or the width if I did the right as well and the bottom if that had any shape. But we're just going to work in this section here. I'm going to scale the image up a bit just to get some better quality out of this. So go to image, image size, and change that to 2048 as opposed to. 1024 pixels. And how we're going to make the shapes that we want is by using these selections up here. So if I first create a new layer, a new empty layer, and then go to a circle selection, and I'm going to draw a really big selection. I'm also going to hold down shift as well so it stays perfectly round. Zoom out a little bit before drawing this. Draw that out, holding down shift. We get a nice big circle, something something like that should be fine. I'm then going to press control and backspace, and that's going to fill that layer with white. I actually didn't want white, I wanted black. So if I click this arrow down here and then press control backspace again, that should fill it with black. I'm then going to grab my rectangles uh, marquee tool, press Control D to get rid of that old selection, create a new layer, and draw a little square. I only want a little lip of a cut around here. So I'll press uh, these two arrows again and press Control and Backspace, deselect that. I can also hold down Alt and drag this now to duplicate it. I'm going to put one here and oh, drag another one and put it around over here. I'm then going to create another circle, holding down shift again. I'm going to put this on a new layer and press control backspace and fill that. Cool, so by clicking and moving these around, I should be able to position them a little closer to what I wanted, which is probably more like that. 
in terms of a silhouette that's a bit closer to what I wanted. It's kind of the cut, the trim that you might cut into the door, uh, as we saw when I was going through my images earlier. I'm also going to duplicate this square and press Control T, hold down Shift and drag that across uh, just to get rid of this end. Then I'm going to duplicate that again after pressing Return. Hold down Alt, drag. I'll change the colors over. Just use my magic wand tool, select that rectangle, then press Control Backspace. And then I've got a black rectangle that I can uh, use to go off the edge here. So let me press Shift. I'd like to be about that long. Cool, so something like that is pretty good. Let's add a new empty layer just above our reference image and fill that with white. So control backspace, no, invert the color, control backspace. Uh, we have something like this. I'm just gonna merge all of these layers together, all the ones above here by selecting the bottom one, pressing shift, select the top layer and then press control E and they will merge. Then want to just get rid of a bit more of these leftovers so i'll just delete that and that and i'll just magic one select all of the white area and delete that as well cool so i'm just left with this shape which is the one that i wanted and let me give it that little white chunk there Oops. And I'll just place this so it fits in here a little better. So it fits inside the backspace there. Cool, and that's fine. Let's move on to the next shape. So that'll be with a rectangle. It's going to draw out what will become the uh, door handle section. So I want it to be probably longer than that, actually. Something like that. Move it down a tad. And I'll fill that with black. So here, create a circle. Probably there. I'll put this on a new layer. And then press, deselect it and hold alt and drag to duplicate that to the bottom half as well so i have those two circles on the top and the bottom so draw out a rectangle here add a new layer fill that one and i'll duplicate that to also make the lock section something more like more like that. Maybe I could undo that one. And that'll be fine. This could potentially be a bit longer. Okay, so that's the main shapes. I just want to put the holes in them to accommodate the screws and the handle going in. So I'll just use the circle tool again and draw another circle. Probably around this size. Put a new layer on. Might make this a little bit smaller. And more like that. And control backspace. And now I'm going to do the little screw heads. So a much smaller circle. Maybe a little bigger than that. Something like that would be fine. And then I'll just alt drag that over to this side. Oh. Get rid of that extra piece that I didn't want. And then I should be able to alt drag this one down.
and then drag that one over here. Cool. Probably draw a new circle for the screws on the hinge, as so I think they'll be a little bit larger. Just hold down shift to select all three so I could align them a little better. And then I'll probably grab this one again. I'll just use the arrow keys to be a little bit more accurate. Pop that on there. Oops. Okay, then all I need is this square. Or oh, I'll just draw a new one. Just to go in here. I'm just using the space bar to move my little rectangle around. Add a new layer for this one, stick it on the top. And make sure it sits white. Let's move that down a tad. Okay, it did look pretty good till I saw those two circles down there. So do make sure you don't accidentally duplicate ones you didn't want. That one's fine, it's kind of out of the way. So I kind of just want to merge the rest of this together as one thing. So I'll select the top layer and I'll hold down shift and select this second to bottom layer and press control E. And now all of these are one object. I'll give it a background layer and fill it with white. And that's going to do it for this uh, texture. We'll be able to generate our mesh based on just these images. So I go to file, save as, and we'll call it our door underscore alpha. And move back to ZBrush. I'm now going to build uh, one of the screw heads to go into some of the holes uh, for that design that we just made. So I'm gonna go into, click on tool inside the light box tool. Uh, and just double click on polysphere.ztool. I can then hide the light box and just left mouse drag in the middle of the screen and draw out this circle and press T to edit. Cool, I can now turn the circle. I want to go to my subtool palette on the right. Let's adjust that. And I want to go to append cube and append cube again. Uh, with this first cube, I'm just gonna turn off perspective here, just so I've got an orthographic view. Move this down about halfway, hold down Alt and click on the other cube and scale that in quite thin, like so. Then I can move this one up and scale this one up a little bit as well. Uh, something like that would be fine. Maybe I'll move that up a touch. Uh, then I'm going to go to where it says live boolean up here and turn that on. And I'm going to set both of these to subtract here. And that's going to make them both cut away from this mesh. Might move this one up oh, just a little bit. You can see I can do live updates with this 
live boolean just to be able to adjust the cut, but that will be fine. Uh, maybe I'll move this one down a touch as well. There we go. Now I'm going to actually turn this into a mesh. So currently it's kind of in a preview mode. I can kind of turn them on and off and keep adjusting the shape, but it hasn't actually uh, made the actual cuts on this screw head yet. To do that, I need to go to Boolean down here on the right in the subtool palette and hit make Boolean mesh. Then it's created this mesh, which is called a U mesh over here. We can rename this by clicking on rename and call it screw. And we can see what edge flow we've now got. So it's made some uh, interesting cuts in it, not very useful for softening out any of the edges or adjusting the shape. Uh, so, so holding down control, I'm just going to mask across here and press control and just keep clicking to see that feather. Uh, I can then hold down all and move my pivot point and scale this bit up a little bit. So just not to have it quite as deep as it was before. I think that's a bit better. And move it down. And that's fine. It would now be best just to dynamesh this. So I'm going to clear the mask that was there. And what Dynamesh does is essentially redraw all of the edge flow into little squares. So if I go to Geometry, Dynamesh, uh, I'm just going to run it at its default settings to see what it does. So you can see it redrew the edge flow. It didn't do a great job at that resolution. So I'm just going to Control Z and change that to maybe 256 and Dynamesh that. It'll take a little bit longer because the calculation's a bit bigger. That's already done. And then I'm going to press Control and W, and that will polygroup the whole object into one polygroup. I will then press Control and draw a square right through the middle. Uh, maybe get a bit closer than that. And you can see that my current poly count is 128,000, which is fine for this screw head at the moment. I've got this uh, mask I've drawn all the way through. I'm going to press Control W again. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to redraw the edge flow, uh, but um, also maintain these edges around here a little better. And I can do that in C Remesher on the right hand side. If I click on Keep Groups, it's going to try and maintain. Uh, this poly group whilst it makes the poly count 10 down here. So 10 being 10,000 tries, which is uh, should be plenty to get a nice finish. So I'm just going to press ZV mesh and let that calculate. Nice, so you can see that's redrew the edges. It's got a little bit low res again, but I can press Control D to add a level of subdivisions. And probably one more time. And that's fine. I might go to Deformation. And just with the taper, I'll leave it in X. Maybe not X. And I'll taper it in Y. That's better. I'm just going to widen it out a little bit as it was feeling a little bit um, narrow. But that's better. That's a nice quality screw head. I could view it with um, a better matte cap. So clicking on this one, you can see it's quite a nice looking screw head. Cool. Let's bring in the rest of the model. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click on Cylinder on the right-hand side here. I'm then going to go and press Make Poly Mesh 3D. Go to Geometry and go to Shadow Box and change this resolution to 1024, which is the maximum it'll go. Change Polish to 5 and then hit Shadow Box. And give that a second to calculate. And you'll end up with this, which is essentially a box that will 
create uh, an, a mesh based on a mask. So what we had there was the cylinder, but if I was to draw any mask on here, it will create a mesh based on that mask. So I can get rid of these masks by just holding down control and drawing a little square outside. So draw a mask. And you can set the depth for these masks on this side. So if I drew down here, it would say make that mask this thick. So we're going to load in our own uh, mask. So go to your alpha brush over here. Go to import. Uh, select your door alpha. And then go on the right hand side to masking. Mask by alpha and hit mask by alpha. And then it will draw our mask on the bottom. Then we can set the depth of it by holding control and drawing a square along the side like this. And this would now have generated our 3D mesh based on the 2D image we made in Photoshop and imported into our alphas. So now by scrolling to the top and hitting make poly mesh 3D, we now have an object we can manipulate. Uh, we want to separate these into separate objects because currently they're all one object. We can do that by going to polygroups, auto groups, then subtool, and split groups or group split. And we now have them all as separate parts. I want to make this one a little bit thinner. I can center the pivot by hitting this go to unmask center and just scaling that in. Uh, these hinges, they can be pretty thin. And this can be quite uh, thick. I might scale it in a little bit at the same time. So, something like that would be fine. Good. So, now I'm going to bring in these screw heads so go to append and pick out the screw that we named earlier we can select that hold down shift to rotate Let's scale that down and we can start duplicating this one and distributing it across all of these models so duplicate move across now you can see my rotation was actually slightly off. So I'll just fix that on both. I'm just going to scale these all to fit in here. Cool, oh, duplicate that. I might scale that one up a little bit more. Now let's duplicate this one, and then I'll start to rotate these around a bit, just to give them a bit more natural variation. There we are. Okay, that looks good. Let's take this one again and duplicate it and arrange them for the hinge piece.
Okay, what do you guys have? And then start to rotate these around as well. They all seem slightly higher, so I'm going to probably merge them all together. They should be the last three here. So if I select the top one and go to merge, merge down, and do that for all three, you can now see they're all one object. And then I'll move them down. inside there a little better. Make something like that. Cool, last set of uh, screws. Okay, so that's all the screw head parts done. Now we're going to make it a little bit more uh, flush on these two. So by flat taking the tops off of the screw heads, we can have a more um, natural shape for these kind of screws that would be constantly flat against the door or flat against another frame. So to do that, I'm going to need to merge all of these screws together. This should tidy up our sub tool. If I drag on the visibility count, I can make this list longer and I can drag up and see all of my screws. The first screw was kind of the example screw, uh, but the rest of these can probably all be merged together. So let's go to merge down. Always okay. Uh, anything that we merge together, we can separate just by regrouping and separating so it doesn't matter that you merge all these things together because we can later separate anything that isn't merged by vertices okay so to cut the tops off of these screw heads i just need to hold down control and shift go to where it says brush up here and pick clip curve then i can still with um, shift and control held down I can draw out these lines. You can see there's a little gradient on the top. I can hold down the space bar as well to move this around. And then I can position it just to chop the top of these screws off. Uh, probably around there. I'll just let go of everything. And you can see it cut right through the shape. It is a little bit fiddly to get used to, but it is a very useful tool, the clip curve. So just holding down Control Shift, drawing these lines and whichever way you see the gradient is where it's going to get cut. I can let go of that over here and it won't affect anything. Oh, I've probably got a little carried away. You can see I've actually taken the entire screw head off of that one. Uh, but I quite like what I did over here. So I'm just going to control Z and undo that. And then I'm probably going to need to separate these two lots of screws again. To do that, I can just press control W. And what that does is polygroup all of those screws into one polygroup. Then I can hold down control, draw a square over these ones, press control W again. Uh, and then I can zoom out a little bit, draw another mask over these and press control W. And now I have three different polygroups. I can just go to groups split in the split panel down here. Cool, I now have three sets of screws, one for here, 
one for middle hinge and one for the door. So the ones I'm going to cut first will be these ones. Then I'll just frame them, hold down control shift, draw that line, hold down space and cut them around here. And now that's just affected that group. I can then select these middle ones. And cut the top of that off, not quite as low as before. Cool, now I can still see the tops of the screws, but they're a bit more flush with these that will be sitting differently on the door. Uh, I also need to add a few cylinders at this point, so go to append in your subtool palette. Let me uh, lower this count. So go to append and click on a cylinder. Going to select that cylinder and scale it. Scale it down. You might just pop it over here for a sec. Uh, I'll duplicate it and position this one along the edge of this hinge Ooh. and scaling it up. It probably needs to be a lot thinner than that. So. Maybe there. It's always useful to have good reference when you're trying to be accurate with stuff. So do have a look at a hinge. You're probably not that far from a door at any time. Certainly if you're at a computer. Okay. And I kind of want to divide this up into separate elements, this cylinder, because it's probably made up of five, like two interlocking in the middle and three joined to the other hinge. So to do that, I'll just press Q to come out of my drawer, press Control and take the top three, press Control W, uh, take the next three, press Control W again. I'm just going to polygroup in batches of three as I go down. Probably could have been better with my maths there, but uh, let's uh, polygroup those last two. And then hold down Control and Shift and click on the last two, and then click on them again, still with Control Shift held down just to hide it. And then we can go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Dell Hidden. And I highly recommend at some point you customize your uh, ZBrush to add these buttons to the interface or work out quicker ways of accessing them just to stop you always diving into menus. I'm doing it for this tutorial so you can see where things are, but better to have them in an easy access position. Anyway, so I've now I've got four groups instead of five. So I'm going to split these groups. To do that, I can go to my subtool, group split. Okay. Now they're all separate objects that I can see here. I can duplicate this bottom one, press W, center it on the object, and position it probably more accurately than that. Oops. Let's have it overlap. And then I can merge them all back down again. So merge down there, they're all one, but made up of five separate parts. I probably could have got the maths right on the cylinder in the first place, but uh, that's just a way I could put it back together again. I'm not worried about the spacing being perfectly accurate because it's quite a small detail. You can see it has got holes in it. So I'm going to split it again. So I've got to split, group split. And then I'll close these holes. So then I can go to geometry under modified topology, close holes. And that would have, on this instance up here, would have closed uh, the bottom hole. You can see it's redrawn the face there. So if I do it on the next one, and press close holes, you see it just closed 
capped off the ends. And I'll just do that to the rest. Nice. And now I want to kind of uh, subdivide these so I can make them a bit more high resolution because you're seeing all of these edges. So if I press Control D, let's see it starts to curve a bit on the ends and get a little bit of a streak. If I look at it like this, it's not looking particularly good. It's got some weird details coming through. So I'm just going to Control Z to put it back like this. And by adding these caps, you can see it's kind of made separate polygroups out of the different faces. Uh, if I solo it again, you'll see at the top that one's blue. I can then go to geometry and where it says crease, crease PG, which means crease the polygroups. So if I click on that, you would notice the lines got slightly thicker, but it also means I can press Control D twice and it's going to maintain that edge. So now I can have a nice high detail piece. So I could do that with all of these really, crease PG, Control D, Control D. This one seems like a bit of a dud, so I might just go to Subtool, delete that one, select this one, and I can duplicate that, and move it up to the correct position. I might say I'm not going to be 100% accurate because there's really not that much need. That would be close enough. And then I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit using a deformation. So if I go to the deformation panel down here, and uh, maybe just try with the polish just to see what I get from 26. It still starts to get a little gnarled around the edge. I might just press Control D a couple more times. Polish that. A little bit better. I just took out to 248,000, which is quite a lot, really, for a small cylinder. But um, I can get a nicer edge. I was polishing this a little bit. So again, taking this one up to similar poly count. All around 240,000 active points. Okay, starting to see some of the spacing. I might try and relax it a little bit as well. Might have a look through and go to geometry, and we should have clay polish. And if I use clay polish, that'll just tidy up that edge a bit more. I'll do it again here. Here, here, and here. It would have left a little mask over the edge, but it has kind of made those cuts a bit more obvious. Well, the next thing I want to do is kind of merge or duplicate this panel over here. So we've got two sides to the hinge. So I just selected it by clicking Alt, Subtool, Duplicate. And move that over to the opposite side, just so they're both overlapping. Uh, I'm then going to select these screws and duplicate them. And position them over here. I've got some objects overlapping now, so I'm just going to merge this part with the screws for that as well. So select the screws. I can move things up and down in this stack by using these arrows at the bottom. So by clicking here, I'm pushing it up and then I can merge it down onto the handle piece. And now if I move that, that chunk's all one piece. So 
it's out of the way. And I can fix up these screws a little bit. Uh, they should all have their own polygroups, or if not, just go to polygroups, auto groups, and select select one by holding down control, and it will mask the other two, and I can just rotate individually. So I'll get rid of the mask, make a new one. Oh. If you need to center the pivot on the unmasked, you can just press that button. I just want to give these hinges a slightly different rotation. Okay. Oh, now I want to merge some of these to one hinge and some of them to the other. So if I come off of that selection, so I want to merge that one with that, with that, and all with this. So to find these in our subtool palette, I've got this one selected. I'll just move it to the very top. I'll select this one, move that one to the very top. This one as well. And this one. And then I can just merge all of them down. And now that's all one element. I'll do the same with the other half. So I've got this piece, which I'll move to the top. This one as well. And I'll merge them down. Nice, so I've got these two parts. Uh, now I want to kind of fuse this all together as one shell of a mesh. So to do that, I can go to Geometry, Dynamesh, and I'm just going to start off with a test resolution of 128, just because this is dependent on size. So you can see that's very low res and not much detail. So I'll press Control Z. I'll move that up to maybe 800. And you can see that's better, and that's at 93 thousand all in. If I turn this off, you can see it's got a little bit of noise on the edges. I could press Control D and that would bring that up to 300,000, yeah, 375,000, which is fine. That looks pretty good. So I'll do the same with this one. I'll just Dynamesh it at 800. And then press Control D and Control D again. That's nice something to look like. Uh, more realistic hinges. These would be pretty cool when they're assembled onto the door. Let's move on to making the lock section. Oh, get rid of that. Um, we can do that with another one of our cylinders. So go back to your subtool. And where it's uh, the cylinder down here. I'm just going to duplicate. Oh, yeah, we'll just duplicate that. Press W. I move it over here. I'm going to rotate it towards the camera with shift held down to get it to 90 and position it around here. And then I'm going to hold down, well, I'll uh, solo it so that's all I can see. Uh, frame it. And hold down control and shift to get back to our clip curve. Draw a line from the bottom to the top and cut it in half. And then draw one from the side like this and cut that one in half. Then you're just left with this little wedge. Uh, we can rotate it back towards the camera. So 90 degrees. And unsolo it. Then we should have a piece that we can fit into the lock. If I move that out and that over here. We can play around with the scale. I can make it a bit wider just to fit the space a little better. And scale it up. That's probably fine like that. Uh, what I do want to do is make it a bit more high resolution. But if I press Control D, it's going to soften out that top edge. Uh, so all I need to do is trim the top. Off as well. So with the clip curve tool, let's go like this, and I'll cut the bottom off. 
like so. And I'll scale that again. That's that looks pretty good. And so now I can start to make the door handle itself. So I'll grab my last cylinder, rotate 90 degrees towards the camera, move that out, let's frame it. And just work out the length that I want to go. So probably less than that. Okay, that's kind of fit in the shape. Might just duplicate it. Move on over here. Make it a lot thinner, a little bit smaller. Like so. Press Control D a couple of times, three times, and maybe just trim the edge off. Cool. And this one. I could probably use this piece again, actually, if I duplicate that and scale it up and make it a bit thinner. I kind of need to taper this shape a little bit towards the edge. Uh, to do that, I can go to my deformation and where I've got the taper, I'll do that in Z. And you can see it's slightly off. It's kind of pulling it towards the center of the mesh. Uh, to fix that, I'm going to go to Transform and S Pivot. Oh, that's moved a bunch of things around. But uh, it should now allow me to taper this and make it fatter at one end and thinner at the other. So I'm going to kind of make it fatter to taper off this way, and just like this. Let me just solo it so it doesn't get confusing. I can uh, put my pivot point back in the middle, and maybe use, maybe move this pivot point down a little bit towards the bottom, and use the sphere. I'll actually, move the entire mesh up a little bit and then use this sphere, and that way it's going to move it off of its center pivot so I can get it to bulge more at the bottom than it does at the top. I just want to bulge it a little bit. Uh, you can see more what that's doing if I zoom in on the mesh. I'm just going to be a nicer uh, door handle shape. So I can unsolo it now and put the center pivot back on. And everything should more or less return where it was. I have kind of tapered this in the wrong direction, as you can see, but we can easily fix that just by rotating it back around. And I'll scan it in to fit the shape of the door handle better. You can extend it a tad. But everything else should still be back where it belongs. Cool. And I need to subdivide this a little bit more. So Control D a few times. Uh, take it up to 126,000, and then I can use my clip curve again just to chop down there and chop down here, and then I'll just center the pivot. And move it along. Cool. Might duplicate this piece again. So back to subtool, duplicate, move it across, and scale that down. Oh, that should almost do it for our door handle. Might make this bit a lot shorter. Let's tuck into there. And then I'll just merge them all together. So 
I think I started here, 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 and here. So if I merge those four down, merge down. Uh, but not to this one, because that's the locking mechanism, I believe. Uh, let's just make sure I've got the whole door, uh, the whole handle, which I have. I can then dynamesh this into an object. Um, undo that. I can delete the lower and set the resolution to maybe 800. And then dynamesh that. Go a bit higher, 1600. That's quite large, that might take a minute to calculate. That's fine, that's all done. It's still at about 200,000, similar to what it was before. It's just all one unified mesh. And I could probably polish it a little bit in the deformation as well. So, polish. Done, that's feeling a bit more like a actual door handle. Let's get the actual handle part, the grip part done. And we can do that by appending a cube. Sub tool, append cube, select that, scale it down. And position it roughly where you want a door handle. And obviously you can set it to a more appropriate thickness, something like that. And we'll just position it right there. Mm -hmm. So something like that would be fine. We could hide these other meshes just to avoid it getting confusing. And I can do that. I'm just going to up this visibility count and just hide everything that isn't related to the door handle. It was immediately delete that, I hate that. And this is all on the handle, let's get rid of that. Keep that, I might just move that down towards the rest of the door handle elements, which you're not. No, I'll move that one out of the way. So these three down the bottom make up our door handle. Uh, so to edit this, I'm just going to press Control D to add it, give it some more subdivisions. You can see if I turn that on and off, I've now got a few more points. I'm gonna click on my brushes menu and press M, and that's gonna show me just the move brushes. And the one I want is this one, move infinite depth. There, uh, you can press D or select the button. I've now got that brush selected. And what this allows to do is just kind of move the object all the way across the edge. So we can be a bit more accurate when we're shaping things. I'm going to do this quite manually, just dragging around the corners. Uh, I can press shift and that will start to soften some of the edges. I can use much bigger brushes to get a bit more shape. I want to make it kind of curve down a little bit, but then go back up at the end. And that's generally the door handle shape I'm going for. Uh, but you can just as match this up as best you can, or go and look at a reference for a door handle and pick a door handle that you want to recreate. Uh, important to get this bit round at the end, so pressing shift and clicking on this is going to help soften the shape, which is what we want. We don't want it to end up really thin, but we do want to soften the shape. If I shrink my brush size, I can tighten this up a little better. I don't mind gradually nudging it there because it's quite a unique shape. I'm sure that's a lot thinner.
the smaller brush I use, the more I can get this to thin out. It doesn't matter if it gets a little rough in places because, again, I'm just going to press shift and go over it. So it's starting to pinch a little bit there because of the edge flow. So this might be a good time to redraw that edge flow. I'm just going to try and capture shape a little bit better at the end. And then we'll redraw the way the edges are rolling around the mesh. So go to uh, remesh. No, sorry, not remesh. Go to geometry, modify, oh, Z remesh. And probably as default settings will be fine. Just hit Z remesh 5000. And we'll end up with that, which uh, should be a little easier to work with. I'm just going to hold shift and paint over the top just to soften that out. And maybe even soften out some of this as well, just to get it to be a bit thinner. It doesn't matter if it's not symmetrical because we can mirror it later on. Other things we can do is by looking from the top, I can hold control and shift and just clip the end off to make that nice and flat. Also adds a nice little beveled edge there. You can press control D to Add more geometry and keep to continue working the shapes. And I've got more or less what I want. I might turn off this poly F just to see the handle. I'm just holding down shift and trying to smooth these contours a little bit more. Let's see, I've got a bit of a crease down here. Then we'll just continue to work the shape. Then use a bit of brush. And I really want to match this up with the, its start position. But I might try and mirror it first uh, just to get it closer to what we want. We'll just nudge that a little bit more. I do want to tighten the edge up here as well. So this combination of softening and nudging it around and it keeps quite nice flowing to the edge. So as I was saying, I'm going to mirror this. So again, I'm going to press uh, transform S pivot and that will just center the object in the pivot. Then go to modify topology and mirror and world. Um, oh, make sure you haven't got subdivision levels. We can drag that down to one and press Del higher. That's going to get rid of that higher set of subdivision levels. And press Mirror and World. Do it in Z. Yay, Z. Uh, and you can see that mirrored across the mesh. I can kind of draw over the top of this, which I will do once I've added one set of subdivisions. So press Control D. And we're going to try a clay tubes brush. Make the brush size a little bit smaller. Intensity about 14. And just what I want to do is start to draw and hold down shift. And I can just draw a relatively straight line across the top of the handle. I just went back and forth a few times and I've got this, this shape. It's kind of damaged the bottom of the mesh, which is not what I wanted it to do. So if I control Z that, and the reason it did that is because uh, back face masking has not been turned on by default in ZBrush. So if I go to brush, auto masking, and back face mask, and then I draw that line again. So start to draw 
hold down shift and just go back and forth a couple of times you can see it hasn't drawn on the bottom half like I'm going to so oops it starts yeah it's gonna to start to draw again just go back and forth then you've got some nice lines like this I'm just gonna need that how it was oh no you do that uh, let's go first control D and that'll soften that out a bit control D again and I can come away from this pivot point so back to center pivot not really sure about that end lip let's uh, go back down through the subdivisions and remove that just by pressing shift and drawing over the end and I just want to start to shape it to the actual door handle section uh, so again go back to your move infinite brush get a nice big brush and I can drag this around That seems to match pretty good. Let's start work the circle back in. And I just hold down shift and if I hold down shift and lower the intensity, which is currently at a hundred, I can soften it but not take away all of that detail just to make it a little less obvious that pattern's there i'm mostly just covering the seam that i got from the masking and it adds a, a little bit of interest to the door handle i might just trim the edge again so I hold down control and shift and chop the end off and that gives a nice cut along the edge I could also taper this handle a little bit more, so I might just put it back to the S pivot. Go back into deformation and just taper it uh, along the Z. No, maybe X. And just to make it taper off a little bit so it's not as wide at one end as it is the other. Nice, that should do it. So let's go back to our center pivot. And we want to kind of connect this handle to the arm for the handle. How are we feeling proportionally here? It looks it looks like quite a big arm compared to the compared to the handle. So we might just Grow the scale of this a little bit and just try and match it up. It might have been just from some of the tapering, but I can again click curve and just chop that end off and get that to sit even more flush. So, the level of detail I like to go into to be accurate with this stuff really pays off in the end because it will look a lot crisper we can go back to our highest subdivision level with that again and unhide some more of our pieces because we're about done with this handle or oh, maybe I just merge these two parts together so the handle down I'm gonna merge merge down so these are both connected I can center the pivot there and move it back so it's inside the door. There we go. Come on, you can just see a little bit of that connection there. All right, so I was unhiding all of this. I can start to combine a few of these elements now and start to build the actual door itself because we 
built all of the extra little parts that we're just going to attach to the main frame. So I'll merge this one down to make the door handle. I could even name it just to start being a bit more organized. So handle. Uh, I'm done with that cylinder now, so I'll just delete that. Goodbye. And I think I'm done with this screw head as well. So we'll delete that. Cool, I'm just going to merge the screws back to the hinges and the lock parts to the, the appropriate spots. So it might require moving things around in your stack a little bit and recognizing the shapes. Uh, so this one connects with this lock, so I'll merge that down. And the four screws also connect there, so move that down. And merge that one down. And the hinges this one connects with this one, so merge down. And this other half of the hinge would merge down there as well. Okay, so that should be all of the parts connected. Let's rename them, so rename hinge one. Hinge two lock and this part. Uh, so this part is going to be our door. So let's just solo that object. And what we want to do is kind of skew the mesh sideways. So we can do that in deformation. Let me just lower this count and go to deformation. And then here we have skew. So if I drag that to this side, you'll see it doesn't do very much. But um, if I change the angle to Y and do it, it folds right over this way. So you get this design. If I undo that and then rotate it 90 degrees around, and then use the skew in Y, you see I can fold it uh, over this way, which is kind of what I wanted. Uh, I don't really like this uh, weird pattern that's done here. And it's done that because I haven't got enough geometry to get a tight line across. So to get more geometry before skewing it, I might just uh, dynamesh it at a high resolution. So go to geometry, dynamesh, uh, what does it do at 128? That's quite low. So maybe 100 and, or 1300. And that should be a nice high resolution for that. It might take a second to calculate. But yeah, that's at 1.5 million. That's probably a bit high. Maybe go a little bit lower, so 900. So you can see how easily you could end up with a very big number that might crash your machine if you got into 10, 20 million polygons in one go. Uh, so do start a low resolution, just in case, because it is size dependent. Uh, so that's at 900,000, which is fine. Uh, I'll skew this mesh at that resolution, and I should get a much better result. So deformation, skew, uh, like so. And you can see that line's a lot tighter now, because I've got the geometry to be able to do it. Nice, so let's rotate it. A little bit to the side so it's level and go to geometry modify topology and mirror and world and we want to mirror in both y and z but not the x so if i click on that you'll see it made this shape which isn't really what i want uh, so i need to move this around to rotate this pivot i can just press alt and shift whilst i turn and that way it's straightened that out. And then I can move it, uh, I think, to the left. And then press Mirror and World. No, maybe to the right. But maybe I was right on the left. Okay, so what's happening is it's kind of folding in on itself. So I need to kind of mirror it first, just to be able to mirror it across. So this will make sense if I go to Deformation and press Mirror in Z. Sorry, mirror in Y. 
and then go back to geometry and then first move on world you'll see it'll actually uh, won't delete itself and that's because it's only working in one direction at the moment uh, so if i undo that and then move the object a little bit and then press move on world here or a little bit further across further that way so it can take a little bit of fiddling around with the position to get this right uh, so if i undo that move it up now and i'm just trying to use the pivot point as a place to be able to get this shape so it kind of perfectly aligns in a way that um means that i don't get any weird edges and this is looking pretty good uh what i wanted is kind of the inverted shape of the door panels which i'm going to use to cut over itself i did catch a little crease there so be careful not to accidentally end up with any weird creases you want this nice clean line so it's just where the pivot point wasn't quite perfect i can always stretch these out from this point uh, if i need to Right, so that's that bit sorted. Uh, let's append a cube. So I've got a subtool, append cube, select that cube and scale it across. So we're going to make this the shape of our door. Uh, let's start working in line with the bits that we have for now. So I'll scale my door to kind of fit where the handle is. Maybe even position it based on that handle for now. I'll grab this piece that we just made and rotate it to the side. So holding down shift 90. And what we want to do is subtract this shape from this one. And we can do that as long as we've got them stacked in the correct position. So uh, I'm going to move this down so it's below the actual door this is going to be our door i'll rename that door uh, to make it a little easier to see what's going on i'm also going to change the colors of the mat caps so we can do that just as a temporary thing just to help visualize what we're doing by going to draw turning on m at the top and then going to color and fill object and i'm going to fill object on all the objects that i want to be metal so color fill object again and one more time and what that's going to do now is make these colors permanently be this matte cap this metal one so if i change to let's say the red one of before you see that all this stuff should have stayed the same i might have uh, masked it inadvertently whilst i was doing it so if i had a little mask over those screw heads that would have stopped the color going through but now if i go back to that matte cap and then go to color fill object all of those screws are now the uh, same metal material and i can go back to this matte cap leaving this size metal anyway to subtract this object for or this object from this object all i have to do is select my door go to live boolean at the top and press subtract down here you can see that didn't do anything uh, and that's because they weren't overlapping so if i actually select this object and move it across and then press subtract you'll see it's cut that shape out of this one if I go a bit further, you can see I can push all of that shape through to the other side. You can see it's quite deep, uh, which is a little deeper than I thought it was going to be. So I might just squish the shape a little bit. This might be easier to do without it being subtracted. But I could do it whilst it was. I'm just moving it in and out just to see how deep I wanted that cut. See, when it disappears, it's when it's going inside the mesh entirely. So just to try and keep it on this edge. Looking kind of a bit of streaking through the mesh. Um, I could probably fix that by smoothing out some of the elements. It does feel a little bit sharp in places anyway. So to do that, 
I will solo it and not have it subtract with that mesh. And I'll probably just redraw or polish out some of the edges. So I could do that by going to geometry or sorry, deformation and polish. I've done that at quite a high value. Okay, that's smoothed out a lot of the edges. It feels a bit more natural, uh, like it's been painted wood rather than very sharp wood. I did find this cut a little bit deep, but maybe I'll change that a little later on. Right, so let's put it back in our subtools to subtracting. And that shape looks pretty decent. Let's get this door a better size. So probably be relatively tall, maybe a bit wider than that. Let's grab this shape. And I'm just going to duplicate it and move one over here so I can edit this one and always go back to that if I want. I'm going to mask half of it and then hold down control and just click on the mesh and you'll see that mask is starting to blur. That's just by holding down control and left mouse clicking over the mesh. I can then move this down without really damaging the shape a great deal to make it a bit taller. Maybe I got something. I will make it quite tall because this is and then scale the whole thing down as it do feel quite wide on the edges as well. So I'll do the same on the side. Just hold down control, blur that, blur that mask a bit. Oh, I might redraw that mask. And press Q to go make sure you're in the draw mode. And then I can press control and just blur that mask. Press W and move it. To be a little bit wider as well, and something like that. And then I'll just scale the whole thing down a little bit. Move it across. Move this door. Over and I'll duplicate this. Move it over to this side. Set that to subtract. I'm going to try and align this door a little bit better. Yeah, that's a good size. I can duplicate these again and pop them down. Maybe have quite a high kickboard at the bottom. Okay, it's got a lot of the basic shape of the door out of the way. Uh, next, I can probably get, afford to get rid of this now. I'm quite happy with what I've got, so delete that. And maybe I'll position the hinge, or the lock, sorry, the lock mechanism for the front. Move that over here. Get that to center the pivot and frame the object. Rotate it 90, and then we we'll try and position this on the side of the door as well. Just let it intersect with the mesh, but not so deep that you can't see it, and try and get it straight on the side. Okay, and this hinge, 
uh, just one of the hinges probably this one would be best to just hang on the door so I'll move it over to the side rotate it around and I'm not too worried about being very accurate with that position yet because I still I'm going to tweak the shape of this door a bit more but first I need a few additional cuts and to start giving it some uh, wood pattern so to add some more cuts to it let's find where our door is just to organize this lot a bit better I'm just going to make them all not cut into the mesh and merge them all down so I don't want to merge them together whilst they're set to subtract uh, but I can do it like this and then just have the whole lot subtract was once and that. That way it's a bit tidier whilst we're working. Uh, let's append another cube. So append cube, select that. And I'm going to set that to subtract as well. And you can see immediately that's just going to cut a big hole in our mesh. I want to make it quite thin. Uh, let's frame it. Because what it's going to represent is kind of the cut between this panel and the next panel kind of implying they're all separate pieces of wood. And I don't want it to cut all the way through the door, so I'm going to make it a bit thinner. And let's just see the actual mesh so I can scale that a little better. So that's quite wide. Let's thin it out to here. And then when I set it to subtract, and push it in, it should just make a little cut. Probably want to go about there. And to check if it's deep enough, we can zoom right in. And about there looks fine. And this cut wants to run all the way through the model from the top to the bottom, so I can scale it up to make it pretty big. Let's see how big I did make that. We don't need it excessively big, just big enough to cover the door. So something like that would be fine. And then I'll duplicate that again and put one on the opposite side. Then just set it to cut or subtract. And you can see these two panels aren't quite aligned very well. So I'm just going to select it and frame the whole lot and if I mask all the other ones just by holding down control and drawing those big rectangles I can move this pivot point by holding down alt and then we'll just zoom in on where we want it to go and I can move it and all that's moving is just this panel so they now align perfectly with those cuts that I just made. I want to make some more cuts that are running across the mesh as well. So let's take that last cube, duplicate it, turn it minus 90 and that will cut along there. Set that to minus and position it so it's cutting across from one to the other. I'll duplicate that as well. and cut that one I can do that again duplicate move it up set it to subtract And that's a pretty good position for that one. Oh, one more at the bottom, I think. Duplicate, move down. Then have this one subtract as well. Good. Uh, so next thing is I don't really want them cutting all through the edge of the wood. I just want them cutting those individual middle panels out. 
So I can kind of trim these off a little bit. So let's set all of those back to be visible, uh, which were the ones that were running horizontally across the mesh, uh, which goes up to this one. So these four down here, if I merge them all down, merge down, merge down, merge down, and solo it, you can see I've just got those four panels. What I want to do is just uh, scale scale these in a bit. Uh, let's try and center them on the object and just scale these. Just they're not overhanging the entire door, but um, fitting nicely across this middle section. Okay, something like that will be fine. And this way, it's just cutting out that middle part. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's add, I uh, kind of want to play around with the scale a little bit, which uh, can be a little bit frustrating after you've moved some of the elements. Let's just look at it in a perspective mode. It does feel a little wider than it is tall. So I still might just scale these top panels a little bit more just by Selecting them up here, I can mask the entire bottom half. Uh, again, just blur that mask a little bit and move them up. So maybe around there, just making them quite a bit taller. Then I can unmask it find the door which is here uh, try and position this on the screen and just scale this up a little bit it would be good to use uh, some exact measurements when you're making doors or at least have a scale in mind if you're developing it for a game the last piece i want to adjust would be that last panel that i put in which I could mask all the others except that one because all the others are still in the correct position. Move that pivot point up. I'm just going to give it that perspective that I added. And get that back where it belongs. Right. Cool. So that's a better, a better shape for my door. Let's hide that other hinge. So this would come into play if I was to build uh, the other part of the wall, uh, and I could also bake them together just because they would be perhaps used as separate, uh, a, a single mesh. Let's uh, hide the right one. Oh, so I can duplicate that. So duplicate and pop it near the top. That one a little bit higher. Nice, no, I still want to mirror the wood from this side to the other side. Uh, to do that, I'm going to need to merge a few more of these elements together. So some bits are almost ready to go. I'm just going to mirror this door handle over. So by selecting the door handle, looking from the side, I can just go to geometry and mirror and world. I think I want to go in the Z axis. Yep, correct. And that's kind of jumped from one side to the other, so I have that mirrored. And I kind of need to do the same with this, but because I'm using a live Boolean, it isn't actually created yet uh, inside of ZBrush. So what I'm going to need to do is merge all of my elements that are metal. So let's go from the top. I'll even include that hidden mesh that I did a second ago. So this is all one mesh now, all of my metal elements. If I solo it, you can see I've got my hinges and all the other bits that make that. I'm then gonna go to a separate tool. So just click on a cylinder and then press append and grab those hinges. So they should all be 
this one. Yep, that's all of the different parts that make up the door. I'll then go back to my other scene. You can tell which one it is because it'll be number six, which is got the door. So I've got one version here that has two objects. That's this one, which is just my hinges and the cylinder. I don't even need the cylinder there. I can delete that because all I wanted was the hinges over here and my scene over here. And that way I can delete the hinges from here. So I'm just going to hit delete and they're gone. All I've got is the door and the booleans. I can then go to boolean down here, hit make boolean mesh. And what this is going to do is create a 3D mesh that uses all of these subtractions. So I'll end up with a single mesh, not all five of these. It will take a couple of seconds to calculate. And then I can go up to my tool and I should have one called U mesh, which is this one here. And that's the completed mesh, not with any booleans, just a, a finished piece. So I can mirror this backwards. So if I go to oh, geometry and again, I want to mirror in Z. That should put the door on both sides. Does feel like it gets a bit thin in the middle. So I'm going to undo that. Press W and just move it to the side a tad. And press Mirror and Weld. No, maybe that was fine now we had it. Mirror and Weld. And I reset its position back to the center. And that looks okay. Maybe it doesn't get too thin. And after I've done that, I'm just going to go to Append and our Hinge O2, and that will bring our door pieces back into this scene. So now all I have in this scene is the U mesh door, which I can rename now um, to door underscore high. I'm going to use uh, specific names at this point because when we export it for Substance Painter, uh, it'll be looking for the names to bake certain objects separately. Uh, I will separate off this hinge again because we're not really using that. So to do that, I can just mask it, press Control W, hold Control Shift, click on that hinge, uh, kind of draw my first and then click on that hinge, click on it again, and that'll disappear. I can then go to Geometry or go to Subtool and just split the hidden. So split, split hidden. There we go. Now that's a separate object and I'll hide that and bring back my door. Uh, I do want to still adjust this door shape just very slightly, only extending the top of it. So I'm just going to mask the whole door up to here. And I just want to move that up a little bit just to make it a bit taller. I might make this middle section a little bit taller as well. Just my mask in the bottom half. Okay, I kind of prefer that as a shape for the door. I'll just uh, put up my handles a little bit low now. So it does have a bit of a knock on effect when you're adjusting afterwards. Uh, but if I just mask these two and move that up. That should position itself okay. Nice. So the last thing I want to do to this is just add some surface detail to the the wood. Uh, to do that, I can use a thing called Surface Inside of ZBrush to add some wood grain. But I will need better, like more polygons than what I've got here. So what I'll do with this is I'll dynamesh this shape as well to get more geometry on it. So I just go to geometry. Dynamesh, I'll just run it at 128 and see what it does. And you can see that's starting to take a while to calculate. So but 
but it came out at 543,000. So, has lost quite a lot of the detail, so I'm going to undo it to get that sharp detail again. And I'm going to go for 250 and expect that to take a little while to calculate. Okay, so that's finished at 2 million. And that's really maintained most of the detail that I wanted to get from the shape that we cut. Well, I think that's looking pretty good. Could subdivide it again with a control D to take it up to 8 million. And then we can start to add some other surface details. So let's go to surface, noise. And if I zoom in a bit, I can just drag on the word zoom. You can see by default it makes this kind of noise. If I click on noise plug and go to wood, uh, we can have a look at what wood does. So I'll turn off this noise scale and mix basic noise. And so all I can see is the plugin. And if I scale that in, you'll see you can start to see the lines. I can drag the strength down and then you can really clearly start to see these wood lines running through the mesh. Uh, that looks it looks okay. Maybe we can uh, add a bit more shape to it. So I'll just go back, or we can just turn the maybe the Y angle down here, or some of these other angles. And you see it's starting to rotate the wood a little bit. We can get a little bit more shape in this if I get it to go in a circle a bit more. And you can see it's starting to make this little circle form over here. So just adding a bit more interest to the wood, where the wood rings are. I could go back in to edit this. Uh, maybe add to the ring scale, which, or subtract from the ring scale. And that will change how many lines I've got running across it. So six is actually pretty good. So I'm going to leave that like that. And... I think the strength's about right, so if I press OK, you can see it's got these wood lines now. I might change this mat cap to a basic material, which you can probably see the pattern a little better. It's still quite faint, so I might just go in and up that strength to minus 0, 0 0.008, or maybe just 0, 0.1. And that should be a little bit stronger. Yeah, it's a bit more prominent now. Uh, I want it to be quite subtle because I'm going to take this into Substance Painter and add even more wood detail. I just want to get started in here. I do want the gradients to run in the same direction as the wood. So to do that, I can go to Edit and just save these settings so I can repeat this exact same pattern. So I'm going to save and we'll just call it. Uh, wood for door. Nice. And so I can mask out some of this. So hold down control, go to mask rect, and we can just draw a rectangle over the bits we don't want to affect. So there, you can see that's all gone flat now. We go up a bit further, add it to this panel. Let's undo that. We should still have that other mask. And then I'll draw that out again. Okay. And just this top panel. Okay, so now it's only really affecting the panels that are going upwards. Uh, and I'm going to hit apply to mesh and that's going to make this pattern a permanent thing on this mesh. So I hit apply to mesh. So that's done. 
And now if I invert my mask, so press Control Alt and click in an empty space, go back into noise, go to edit, and it still seems to have kept that pattern that we had before. So I'm just going to rotate it slightly differently so it runs across uh, the model. Maybe straighten that. Well, something like that that's quite good. Uh, maybe a bit wavy. I might adjust the plugin scale a bit to get a few extra lines running across. And I'm still not really happy with that. Rotation, it's going to move. Mostly up here, so. That looks okay. All right, that looks quite good. Let's apply that to the mesh and then get rid of that. And finally, I just want to tweak the scale of this handle a little bit just because it's not really exactly what I wanted. Uh, so I'm just going to select it. Uh, I want to kind of uh, split the handle away from the rest of the mesh. So if I press Control W, that should make everything one polygroup. Then I'll make a mask, draw around these handles, and press Control W again. That's made them separate to the lock. I've caught a little bit of that other part, so I must undo that. And solo this. Let's remove that little bit of mask, just so I'm only getting the handle. So Control W. You can see that's just caught the handles, so I'm going to go to Subtool and then grip, split those. And what I want to do is maybe scale these down just a little bit. So I'll undo the solo, center that pivot. And just move them slightly more central. I think I'd like them to go down a little further than they currently do. So scale that in just a little bit more. Mask the whole entire top half and blur that mask by holding control and clicking here. And maybe move that down just a tad. And I would like to soften this shape here a little bit. To do that, I can just go to polygroups and auto groups. That way all these panels have been separated and I can press control shift to isolate just this outer shell. Then I can go to geometry, sorry, subtool and split the unmasked parts. And that should just split that one panel off. I'll do the same on the other side, this one. I'm just going to isolate it and split the hidden on that one. And now I've got those two panels uh, separated again. I'll merge them both together. So this one plus this one. Merge down. And I'll probably dynamesh this, and this is going to give it a slightly softer edge, plus even out that edge flow there as well. So I go to geometry, dynamesh. Uh, it's going to see what it does at 1 to 8, which goes very low. So probably around 700. And that looks a little higher than what it was, so I shouldn't have lost any quality, but let's kind of soften the edges a little bit. I feel like they can come away from the door a little bit more. So I'm just going to start to position some of the elements a little better. I find this thing's probably a little bit low. So I'm just going to select that. Mask this section. So the hinges. I should be able to just move 
this log. Make sure I've got it selected. Yeah, that's just selected the hinge. So I'm masking over here and moving this bit up, probably closer to where the handle is itself. I might even center that and scale it down just a tad. Okay, proportionally that's feeling a little bit better for the door. The handle could probably will find a little bit further, but I think this is enough. Uh, for this video, so let's uh, get this set up for exporting. Um, what I want to do now is export the high poly door on its own, so without any of the hinge elements, I'll merge them back together again. So this one got to merge down, or before I do, is that nicely aligned? Yes, that's fine. Let's merge this down, merge down, merge down. So I've got the old hinge, which I'm not really using, or the other heart of the hinge I'm not really using at this point. I've got all of those metal elements. Um, let me just fill those colors again. So it was under metal and color fill object. Nice. And with the door, I kind of want to fill this with a color as well. And this is for when I bake it, I'll be able to pick out the two separate sections based on their color. So if I Grab, let's say, any old color will do. Um, maybe something closer to what we end up with. It must be something like that. Let's just go to color, fill object. The color doesn't really matter at this point. It just needs to have some color information. So if I go to RGB rather than M. Uh, so if I change it, so if I change it from M to RGB and then go to color fill object, look at that. Where is it? If I then go to if I then go from M to RGB and go to color fill object, I should have two different uh, base colors for the two objects. So when I go to export it for substance, I'll be able to pick them both out nice and quickly. Uh, so let's export our high poly meshes out now, as I'm pretty happy with my door. Uh, so I've got this door part selected, let's get that renamed door underscore high and I'll just rename the hinge as well to door underscore hinge underscore high. Uh, the reason I'm using this naming convention is because I want when I bake them I'll bake them both separately inside a substance painter so I'll use the namespace for that uh, and let's export both of these objects so this one First, I'm just going to go to the very bottom, go to export, and make sure my settings are like this. So try and turn off MRG and GRP. And then I can press export up here, and this will make an OBJ file, which I will call door uh, underscore high. Might take a second, as it is eight and a half million active points that I'm exporting. And just before I export the handles, I'm just going to move it up just a tad. So I'm going to mask off this section, press W, and just move this up. I'll hopefully mask off this section. Okay. Then move the handle up just to make it align a little better with the door. And then I'm going to export 
The handle using the same settings, so I go to export at the bottom, turn on try, turn off MRG GRP, and just go to export. And it should already have our name there, door hinge underscore high. So I'll just save that. And that's another five and a half million being exported, so maybe take a second. Okay, so that's exported now as well. And we have our two high poly meshes. This is going to be the detail for our texture we create for our game asset. Um, last thing I want to do is export a version I can take into Maya and Quadraw over. So to do that, I just need to decimate the meshes. So if I've got any subtools, which I don't think I have on any of my assets, maybe on my door high, uh, I'm just going to drag that down to one and that'll bring it down to two million and delete the higher and then i'm going to go to z plugin and i'm just going to click this little radial button go to decimation master and hit pre-process current and what that's going to do is calculate how many poly active points i have so two million so that might take a second to process and then i can decimate it so reduce the poly count down to like 20 percent or even less uh, and the, purely doing this so i can bring a mesh into a 3D modeling application to draw over the top of it, not because I need to use it as part of the um, final model. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, I might reduce that down to maybe 10 and then hit decimate current. And what that's done is reduced it to 200,000. So let's pre process it again. Just so I can get it a little bit low, you can see it's a lot quicker this time, and then decimate current. And now it's down to 20,000, which is fine to go into Maya, and I can quad draw over the top of that. Let's just change the material back to the basic. And with the handle, I'm not going to decimate it I'm first. I might just dynamesh it first, so it's at a lower than 5.8 million, because it's so many intricate well, so many separate parts, it's going to take a while to calculate. So it's sometimes easier just to go to Dynamesh, probably type in uh, 200 and Dynamesh that. And you can see that's already dropped the poly count down to 52,000. It has kind of affected the silhouette if I undo that. So I might go slightly higher at 500. And that's reduced it to 332,000 without uh, really affecting the silhouette of the object. So I can still quad draw over that. It's just a lot quicker than pre process and decimate. Uh, it's saying I've got two and a half million, but a lot of that's just this hinge here, which is two million in itself. So if I was to uh, just export these two, this one's 300,000, this one's 20,000. I could decimate this one now, so maybe just pre-process that. It should be nice and quick because it's only 332,000. And then if I decimate current, you can see that's reduced it a lot, but still kept the same silhouette more or less. Uh, you could use decimation to get a low poly model, but um, it's better to go in and quad draw it and then really control the edge flow. Uh, which I'm going to do in the next video. Uh, I'm just going to export these two. So I'll rename them to low. So rename door underscore high to door underscore low and do the same with the hinge. And then I'll just export these two, making sure my settings are still the same. So try as merge group, export door low and the same with this hinge double check my export settings export and door hinge low okay and that's going to do it for this video do come back for the next part where i'm going to create a texture put it into unreal and maybe animate it with a character walking through to show how it's going to be converted into game art but thanks for watching